One of my favorite concepts when it comes to programming is loops. I said loops, not hoops. Although you can think of loops like a hula hoop, where you need some piece of code to execute over and over again, and program flow just kind of goes in a circle for a while. The first type of loop we'll talk about is the while loop. Here's the structure of the while loop with some pseudocode. The condition is very much like the conditions we saw when dealing with if statements, and it usually takes the form of one or more relational operators. The while loop first checks to make sure the condition is true. If it is true, the code in the curly braces is executed sequentially. Once done, execution returns to the top of the loop and checks the condition again. If it's still true, the code in the curly braces executes again. If it's false, the program will skip the loop and begin executing whatever comes after it. To help visualize this, here's an example program in flowchart form that uses a while loop to print hello three times. We start by initializing a variable, i, to zero. We check the condition at the top of the loop. Is zero less than three? Yes, so we execute the code in the loop. Print hello and add one to zero, so i is now one. Return to the top of the loop. Is one less than three? Still yes, so print hello and add one to i again. Now, is two less than three? Yes again, so print hello and increment i. Now, is 3 less than 3? Nope. So we jump to below the loop and print done. Be careful with this. If you forget to increment i or you set the condition incorrectly, you could stay in the while loop forever. Sometimes this is desired, but other times it can cause problems. If this is the case, we say that the program freezes or hangs when it gets stuck in a state or stops responding to inputs. In a new Arduino sketch, type int i at the top. In setup, write serial.begin9600. Then write i equals zero. Under that, while i less than three, open curly brace. Serial.println hello in quotes. Under that, i equals i plus one, close curly brace. This is our while loop that prints hello and increments i before returning to the top of the loop. Once i is equal to or greater than three, the loop stops. So, write serial.println done in quotes to show that we've exited the loop. Upload this and open a serial monitor. You should see hello printed three times followed by a done. Note that we can use the same conditions we covered in the conditional statements episode as well as compound conditional statements we talked about in the logic operators episode. There is another type of loop that functions like the while loop but moves the condition check to after the code. This is the do while loop. By moving the condition to after the code, we ensure that the code between the curly braces is executed at least once. Let's show the do while loop in flowchart form. We'll make it so that we print hello once before exiting the loop. The program enters the loop, prints hello to the console, and increments i from 0 to 1. Only after that do we check the condition. Is i less than 0? Since i is now 1, we exit the loop, though not before executing the internal code at least once. Back in Arduino, change the while line to do open curly brace. After the close curly brace, add while open parentheses i less than 0 close parentheses semicolon. Upload this and open a serial monitor. You should see hello printed once before done. While loops are great if you need to wait for something to happen. And like we just showed, you can use them to execute commands a specified number of times, but in reality, there's a better loop for that, and that's the for loop. The for loop contains an initialization step, which sets some variable to a number. It then performs a condition check to see if it should run the code in the curly braces. If it's true, the code is run. Then, the afterthought portion is executed, which is normally where you would increment or decrement the variable. The process starts over with the condition being checked and continues until the condition result is false, at which point execution jumps to after the for loop. As it turns out, the while loop flowchart we made is a perfect example of a for loop, as we have an initialization step where we set i to zero, a condition checking if i is less than three, and an afterthought where we increment i. Let's write this in a more concise way using the for loop though. Take a look at our do while code and delete the initialization and do while loop. 
write four open parentheses, i equals zero, semicolon, i less than three, semicolon, i plus plus, close parentheses, open curly brace. Under that, serial.println hello in quotes, close curly brace. This should work the same way as our original while loop. Upload and open a serial monitor. You should see hello printed three times before done. While, do while, and for are the three basic loops you'll find in C and C++. Before we end, however, I'd like to talk about two basic commands that we can use to exit out of loops or go back to the top of a loop if necessary. To demonstrate this, let's use some real hardware. We'll use an LED for this. Notice that most LEDs have one lead that is shorter than the other. The shorter lead is the negative side and the longer lead is the positive side. Many LEDs also have a flat notch on the component body that corresponds to the negative side. We'll use pin 9 to control the LED. Notice that pin 9 has a squiggle or tilde in front of it, which means that we can use the analog write function in Arduino to control the brightness of the LED. The function only works for pins that have that squiggle. Put the LED in a breadboard. Connect a 330 ohm resistor between the ground rail and the negative side of the LED. Use a jumper wire to connect the positive side of the LED to pin 9. Put a button on the breadboard. Connect one side to pin 7 and the other side of the button to the ground rail on the breadboard. Connect a wire between the ground rail and the ground pin on the Arduino. Create a new sketch and at the top write const int button pin equals 7. Under that, const int LED pin equals 9. And then int i. In setup, write pin mode button pin comma input underscore pull up in all capital letters, followed by pin mode LED pin comma output in all capital letters. Then in loop, write i equals 0, which will act as our initialization. Then write while open parentheses i less than 256, close parentheses open curly brace. Under that, analog write LED pin comma i. Analog write sets the brightness of the specified pin by toggling the pin on and off so fast that we can't see it. The second parameter, i, sets this level of brightness where 0 is always off and 255 is always on. So by counting from 0 to 255, we can make it appear that the LED is growing in brightness. After that, write if, open parentheses, digital read, button pin, equals equals low, in all capital letters, close parentheses, open curly brace, break, semicolon, close curly brace. Here, if the button is pressed, we want to break out of the while loop. We won't have anything after it, so execution will return to the top of the loop function, where i will be set to zero. Analog write will be executed and set the brightness back to zero, effectively turning the LED off. So, as long as the button is held down, the LED will be off. After the if statement, write delay 3 so that we can see the changing intensity, and then I++ to increase the intensity for the next iteration of the loop. Upload this to your Arduino. You should see the LED pulsing. When you press the button, the LED should turn off, as the program continually sets the brightness to zero since we are breaking out of the loop every time. Back in Arduino, change break to continue. This is similar to break in that it stops execution in the loop. Rather than exiting the loop, however, execution moves to the top of the loop to perform another iteration, but it skips the code in the loop underneath the continue statement. In this case, we never execute I++ while the button is pressed, which means the LED won't increase in brightness. Execution stays in the loop, and the LED will just sit at whatever brightness it was set to when we first press the button. Upload this program. Now, when you press the button, the LED will hold its brightness. This can be a fun game to see if you can press the button at the right moment to catch the LED when it's off. Loops are incredibly useful structures for controlling the execution of your program. For a challenge, see if you can get the LED to pulse on and off by slowly increasing the brightness and then slowly decreasing the brightness over and over again. Have fun with this and happy hacking. It's not hoops. Although, you can think of loops. <laughs> Got it. Nailed it.